Hello everyone, I hope you're having an awesome day. Let's make it a little bit more awesome by learning about Chimarenga. Before delving into the Mbira-inspired popular music in Zimbabwe, I have to make a few points about the political climate of the area at the time when this music first began to appear in the music scene. Much like South Africa, a great deal of Zimbabwe's expressive culture is interwoven with politics, colonialism, and national identity. During the 1970s, Zimbabwe, then known as Rhodesia, was governed by former British settlers. The Rhodesian government implemented a framework of racial segregation that resembled South Africa's apartheid system, very much continuing a policy of racism and exploitation from when the original colony was first founded in 1895. The late 1960s and 1970s were characterized by increasing guerrilla warfare from the communist-backed freedom fighters, and by 1980 the Rhodesian government had relinquished power to multi-racial democracy. Whether it stayed that way is for history to judge. Thus, during the 1970s a growing black Africanist movement was emerging in the country. Torino argues that this cultural shift was one of the primary motivations for the inclusion of indigenous elements within secular popular music, and the most ubiquitous indigenous sound was the Mbira. It was out of this blending of folk and urban music that Chimarenga was born. Chimarenga can be loosely translated to mean struggle, and thus such music is generally considered as Zimbabwe's liberation or protest music. This is because during the Liberation War, folk songs were often used as a means of disseminating information through coded messages. When artists such as Thomas Mafuno and Jonas Satole began to blend these folk sounds with electric guitar music, the struggle songs found new urban audiences. There was also a commercial element to this blending of styles as well. By appealing to both urban tastes and rural or folk traditions, these musical blends would have the best chance at earning the artists a living. Indeed, this commercial thread eventually developed into its own musical style by appealing to urban youth and became known as JIT. JIT and Chimarenga utilized the plucked lamellophone style in their guitar playing, usually over a 1-4, 1-5 chord progression. JIT became popular party music and some of its most famous performers were the Four Brothers or the Bundu Boys. If you have any questions or comments then feel free to post in the comment section below and you can find me on Facebook and Twitter. If you want to keep learning about ethnomusicology, musicology or music in general then you can go to youtube.com forward slash ethnomusicexplained and subscribe and as always I will see you soon.